Hello. Welcome to this week's of teaching. I'm Dr. Anil Gudi and I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception. And I'm going to discuss one of the two cases sent to me from across the world. And both of them are quite interesting. So let's go to the first one. And the first one is a 27 year old lady trying for a pregnancy for some time. She has polycystic ovarian syndrome. She does not get a period without a withdrawal and she had the pill before her marriage to regulate her periods. And she had a, a hormonal profile which was done five years ago which is normal and an aim which was not there. So again, see from the history you have to get to two things and I'll, I'll always be very specific about this because the history quite often will tilt towards your stimulation protocol and will give you hints to the stimulation protocol. Another important thing you have to understand is that you are working with nature. Now get this out of your head that you have to go against nature in all aspects and then you'll succeed. No, your recruitment and the USA is obtained or the follicular recruitment which is either biphasic or triphasic, all that is decided by nature. And so what you're doing is you are trying to get the best out of nature, very similar to what you do with your team. And consider you have a team and you've got to get the best out of it. And the way to get your best out of it is by using protocols which you understand in nature. So again, let's look at the two things, irregular periods or rather no periods except for withdrawal. And she's got polycystic ovaries. Now let's come to the treatment. Clomiphene two cycles tried, and I believe it, you must have gone up to about 100, and there is no ovulation. Letrozole, out of four cycles, ovulated once after 20 days. Then another cycle was given where there was letrozole plus, I think, pure FSH, which I think would be recombinant FSH, or it could be highly purified FSH. 75 for 6 days and it did not work. Then another cycle of letrozole 75, 7.5 milligram with HMG 150 for 6 days. On the 12th day there was the same response and eventually ovulated after 22 days. There was no pregnancy. The uterine size was normal. Each ovary showed more than 10 follicles. Now let's come to the blood test and the hormonal test showed that the FSH was 6.19, the testosterone 0.37, prolactin 14.92, the things which I would be looking at is LH 6.14, AMH 4.77 nanogram. I think the GTT was normal, she's certainly not pre-diabetic. And the questions I was asked is, are there any more investigations required? what protocol for IUI or directly for uh, ICSI. Now uh, here is a, a very, uh, I'll, I'll go from the end and here is a very clever question is do you put, directly put them for IVF or ICSI and my question to this is what does a woman need? The woman needs ovulation induction. Now there's no doubt in case, some cases where whatever you try you are, you are not going to get a unifollicular, a dual follicular, a trifollicular growth. You are going to get a multifollicular growth and then, then the default position heads towards IVF or ICSI depending on the sperm. But otherwise you are looking at ovulation induction. The, the two other factors which I want you to get, you know, think about is one, have a look at it. She has got a regular cycle. So the entire recruitment process is disrupted. So it's very difficult to now predict you know, what is the biphasic or triphasic nature of recruitment that is occurring and how the follicles are coming up into the anterior follicle zone. And this is extremely important. The reason why it's important is that there are some follicles that do not cross beyond the 3 or 4 millimeter mark and on a scan and then you have completely irregular cycles and cycles that go absolutely to the end uh, and it, they, you may end up in fact uh, not getting a period till you give a withdrawal bleeding 
and that entire recruitment profile is disrupted. Now, the only thing that you, you get an idea about is from AMH, but the FSH and LH both don't tell you that. And you know, those who attend my teaching, I will always harp upon it. On, I'll say go back to the basics and go back to the two cell, two gonadotrophin theory, which again is that you know, you're going to move follicles from a very androgenic environment to an estrogenic environment. And what does that? FSH. Again, let's look at my theory. And those of you who understand that triangle I, I draw, you have a resistance, and the resistance comes from the PCO nature follicles that cannot grow, follicles which do not, you know, start producing a high proportion of granular cells and don't start becoming heading towards ovulation. And that is the resistance follicles are facing. Next is what is the force? And if you want to succeed, you need to break the resistance with optimum force. And the optimum force is FSH. So here again, what are the options? And we'll, we'll discuss briefly about the options because this is quite an interesting case and often challenges us again and again. And this is not a very uh, rare case. And I think all of us face these cases uh, quite often. Now again, uh, let's come back to the triangle that I often draw. And I want you to try and understand it. And again, I always say in all of my teaching courses and whenever I teach my juniors, it's time to understand the dynamics of that ovary. Try to understand what resistance you're going to face and try to understand what is the effective force you can apply. And the way it goes is map your ovary. Whatever happens, map the small follicles in your ovary and map the large follicles in your ovary. And look at it in a very simple way. The more follicles you have, the more difficult stimulation is going to be. Why? It's because you are going to find it difficult to break the threshold of one follicle, two follicles. In fact, in IVF, you find it difficult at times because of the huge number of follicles, a large LH and a huge AMH signifying resistance. You find it very difficult then to break the threshold of a reasonable number of follicles. And that is gives rise to a phenomenal over response. Now, let's go back to this triangle. And we see the triangle. Follicles which are closer to that 8 to 9 millimeter mark are more likely to get stimulated. Follicles here are less likely. So if you have an ovary of 20, 25 follicles, all of which are heading towards this area, your stimulation fails. And even if you go to the, the mild protocols, now there are multiple protocols for you know, chronic low dose. And I think the doctor has done absolutely perfect. They've used letrozole. What does letrozole do? Letrozole at a higher dose gives a peak of FSH. Again, what peak does occur? And I'll always draw and show you that if, you know, let's get this out. And let's say you've got a diagram and you want to use letrozole. The higher the letrozole you use, you, you increase the aromatase activity. And so what you're trying to do is you're trying to take a leap of that, of FSH. And that increase of FSH in fact, is what starts breaking the threshold. So, in fact, there is no harm in, in giving an increased dose of letrozone, and rightly done so. So, what would I suggest? I would suggest, yeah, there's irregular cycles, there's PCOS, you've tried a mild dose protocol, it's not going to work. If you have two choices left here, and I'm a bit wary about the first choice, and that's ovarian drilling. The reason is, neither is the AMH very high, and nor is the LH very high. So, what do we do? And that's the difficulty that comes up. And the difficulty that often comes up is that if your LH is not very high and your overall volume is not very high, uh, and then again your AMH is not skyrocketing high, it's a fix whether you drill the ovaries. Because I think you are seeing a higher proportion of, of follicular cells and a lower proportion of theca cells. And in comparison, I'm not saying it's certainly more than uh, than the average. So what are you go going to achieve in these cases? And this is my theory: is you end up causing more destruction by ovarian drilling in these cases. So what will, what will I do in this case? And I, I would say it's a difficult option to do. And it, the difficulty comes up is that any gonadotrophin which I use has to be used 
as in that case beyond 20 or 21 days and looking at the cost and what's the success rate you produce one or two follicles your success rate goes up to about 10 to 15 percent now the other option if this is failing is I would say give a metformin I'm not get believer in it but here again my worry is that letrozole and clomiphene both are failing and in letrozole resistance and clomiphene resistance metformin seems to have its action second is a role of uh, my answer at all yes give it a try I think uh, we don't know the answer research is coming out and we just don't know what's going to happen so just give it a try with that and I would say if you're thinking of IVF and I think here be careful you your response you, you, I would say you already used 150 and you fail. it is completely bizarre if you start using 150 in this PCOS just look at your history again and here I would suggest what you do is do a step down with 300 and use an analog trigger I think that may help you and the reason I'm suggesting this is rather than using low dose protocol is that you you may end up doing a trial and error of multiple uh, times to eventually end up getting a, one dominant follicle or two dominant follicles and though it, uh, what I'm saying may not be an entirely right way of going ahead I'll say well the patient comes to you and she's saying I want to get pregnant early you've tried almost all forms of ovulation induction in fact and then what do you do here you you can't keep going on and on and on looking at the anxiety the patient faces and I think somewhere you'll have to take a step on IVF and trust me this is going to be a difficult case that's a rightly asked question I would say step down I don't care what drug you use step down and see how it works okay good luck guys thank you